I'm ranking all 30 MLB teams from the World Series contenders to the teams just happy to be here. While doing the weekly recaps, I've watched more baseball this season than ever before, so I'm pretty confident in who's a contender and who's a pretender. So let's jump right into the tier list. So I've already kind of filled out this bottom tier here of the not even trying teams. I think this tier is pretty self-explanatory. You know, the Pirates have gotten kind of exciting with Paul Skeens up, but I still don't think they're doing anything in 2024. Um, so we're gonna kind of bounce around here. Let's go ahead and start with the Dodgers. In my opinion, the World Series favorite right now. I think these guys on paper are the most complete team in baseball. Um, and I feel like they haven't played their best baseball yet this season, and they're still at the top of the West. So. For me, I think this team is handily the World Series favorite at the moment. And right up next to them, I got the Yankees. I think this is the most complete Yankee team we've seen in quite some time. Uh, the pitching staff looks very, very good. And even if they may regress, especially, you know, the back end of that rotation, obviously Garrett Cole's coming back. You know this Yankee team is not afraid to do anything at the deadline. And the bullpen for a second straight year looks really really good obviously the lineup adding soto was fantastic aaron judge is starting to catch fire as well i think this yankee team is probably the strongest version of the yankees we've seen in quite some time and the only team i really see right now competing with the yankees is the Orioles. When you look at this team on paper, I feel like they don't necessarily look like a powerhouse. Obviously, you got the young, exciting, up and coming names, but I feel like back to back years now, they've just put it together where the rotation looks really, really strong, despite obviously they add Corbin Burns, you know, Grayson Rodriguez is a big prospect, but despite the names not necessarily being as big, they continue to just collect outs. The bullpen looks to be a strength again for this team, and obviously, this is the type of roster that. The hot team in the playoffs is typically the one that goes far, and this team I could see getting really, really hot uh, at the right time. Obviously, so much excitement from this roster. And the last team I have in the World Series favorites tier is going to be the Phillies. Um, I think this has the argument to be the best rotation in baseball. I think it's definitely the best rotation in the National League. And unlike the Mariners, for example, who I think also have a great rotation, this lineup is scary. I mean, this team, top to bottom, has a lot of scary names in it. Obviously, Bryce Harper uh, is the kind of the main face of this team. But you look at other guys like Kyle Schwarber, Bryson Stotts off to a nice start to this season. Alec Bohm's off to a nice start to this season. Uh, I think this Phillies team, they've been the best record in baseball for a while now. And with the injuries to the Braves, I could see the Phillies winning the division um, in, the, in the NL East. And I think right now they are the strongest team in the NL East. And I'm going to put the Braves right below them in the World Series contender tier. I think this team, Acuna out, Strider out. I think there's more questions than this team has had in the past couple years. I still think this team is very good. I still think they're going to win 90 plus games, but I'm not confident without their best hitter and best pitcher to put them in that favorites tier. I think the Phillies have them right now, especially with the depth in the rotation. Uh, and I think they're a, a little bit behind the Dodgers, like we saw in the series where they played each other. The Dodgers handled business in that series. And I think the Braves are going to have to really put things together, maybe add somebody at the deadline, maybe somebody comes up from the minor leagues, but they're gonna have to put something together if they wanna really compete with the Dodgers and Phillies. I still think this is the third best team in the National League, uh, but I don't think they're quite that World Series favorite like they were prior to all these injuries. The other team I have in the World Series contender is gonna be the Guardians. I think this is one of the most complete Guardians teams we've seen in a while. It feels like the offense has always held this team back, but I think they've done a really good job both adding guys from the minor leagues, adding some undervalued free agents, uh, and obviously having a guy like Jose Ramirez on this roster. This offense, not only is it not a weakness for this team this year, it's a strength. I mean, this offense is good. You know, they're above average. It's not just that the pitching staff carries the team and the offense isn't going to kill them. This offense, I think, is pretty good. I think this is the most complete Guardians team we've seen. I think the AL Central was a little bit hazy of who's going to win it to start this season. But now, I think the Guardians are the clear favorite for me. Uh, I'd be surprised if the Guardians didn't win the division at this point. They look complete to me. I, I like the rotation. The bullpen, obviously, is one of the best in baseball, if not the best in baseball. And I think I, I like what they've done with the lineup. Um, and then the final team I have in this World Series contenders tier is going to be the Mariners, who I think have the have an argument to be the best rotation in baseball. Again, the lineup is not necessarily great, but I don't think it's a weak point for this team. You know, are they going to be the worst lineup of the 
top seven here as we got. Yeah, I think they are the worst lineup there, but they might be the best rotation. I think they're going to be a really scary team to see in the playoffs because this team doesn't really have a weakness in the rotation. Um, the bullpen is good as well. I think Andres Munoz has been one of the best closers in the entirety of baseball. And I think this Mariners team is really, really scary as we get down to the stretch. Moving toward the bottom of this tier list, obviously the top three tiers is the 12 playoff teams. So who do I see here that is not going to be in the conversation when we get into August or September? Uh, I'm gonna put the first team here and then try but fail tier, and it's gonna be the Rays. And this is a team that I've always been high on. I always give them the benefit of the doubt, but I just don't think they have the roster and they haven't had the injury luck this year uh, to be a contender. The American League is strong. I think if the Rays were in the National League, I can make an argument that they sneak into the playoffs, but I just don't see it happening here with this team. Very similarly, the Giants, same thing. I feel like I, I've given the Giants the benefit of the doubt. I think they're a very smart organization, but this year, the pitching staff feels like they're overperforming. Jordan Hicks, I don't think it's gonna be this good this year. Um, you know, Logan Webb obviously is super solid all the time, but I don't think that this rotation is gonna be as good as they have been, and they still aren't really winning games. So I, I could see this team regressing and potentially being a seller at the deadline. Uh, the next team I wanna put here, again, if this team was in the National League, I could see them making a run, but I'm gonna put the Red Sox in the try but fail tier as well. These guys came out nice to start the season, but kind of like I said with the Giants, I feel like they played their best baseball to start the year and still weren't able to pick up as many wins, you know, to get a lead, you know. Uh, baseball is all about going on these stretches of wins when your team is hot, and it felt like the Red Sox were really hot. They had Tyler O'Neill hitting out of his mind. They had four or five guys in the rotation who were all dealing at the same time, and they weren't able to do enough, uh, in my opinion, during that hot stretch to put themselves in a position to make the playoffs. I still think this team's gonna be solid. I think they're gonna be around 500 all season long, but I don't quite think they're going to be a playoff caliber team. Um, another team kind of in the same vein as the Mets. This team, I feel like <clears throat> you could argue they should be in the even not even trying tier, but I feel like you can't really be tanking with a payroll that large. This team, it seems like is so dysfunctional. Um, the bullpen has been terrible, the rotation has not been good, and the lineup really hasn't been good despite some of the names in it. Uh, I think this team is pretty terrible. They could end up with the worst record in this tier. The only other team who I think might finish lower is gonna be the Reds. Uh, I, I like this team a lot, I think they're fun. I think in a year from now, they're gonna be really exciting. But again, kind of like I said with the Red Sox, kind of like I said with the Giants, I don't think the Reds did enough while they were hot. Uh, and then the last team I wanna put in the try but fail tier is gonna be the Tigers. I think this Tigers team is promising. Uh, this lineup really isn't playoff caliber. This rotation I think is playoff caliber, but at the same time, I don't think you can expect Jack Flaherty or Tarek Skubal to be this good all year, or Reese Olsen for that matter. I think all three of those guys are due for some regression. The bullpen has already started to regress. Uh, and I think this team, while exciting like the Reds, I think 2025, 2026, look for the Tigers to be a playoff team. I don't think they quite have it in 2024. The rest of the teams here are gonna fall in one of these last two categories. Either the just get in or just miss out. I think this right here is gonna be kind of that playoff bubble. So I've got 10 teams here and five more playoff teams, two in the American League, three in the National League. And obviously, I haven't put an NL Central team in the playoffs yet. And you know the division winner gets in, so I'm gonna go with the Brewers in the just get in category. Uh, I think there's a chance the NL Central only sends one team to the playoffs. I think it's pretty unlikely, uh, but I do think there's a chance, and I think that the Brewers are gonna have the worst record of all the division winners. I think this Brewers team has done enough to win the division. I think there was a lot of doubt of this team going into the season. No more Corbin Burns, obviously no more Josh Hader. I think this team had some doubters coming into the year, especially with how exciting the Cubs and people thought the Cardinals would be back to where they were, and even the Reds. You know, there was so much excitement in this division. I think the Brewers kind of got slept on, but this lineup is really good. You know, William Contreras is looking like the best offensive catcher in the league in 2024. I think the rotation, it's funny because they did similar to the Cardinals where they brought in a bunch of veterans to kind of fill out this rotation. But unlike in St. Louis, feels like it has worked. 
Is Joe Ross going to be this good all season? Probably not. Is Wade Miley going to keep pitching like this? Probably not. But I do think they're going to do enough to keep this team at the top of the NL Central. Uh, and I think they're going to go ahead and run away with the division. And the first of these NL teams I have missing out is going to be the Padres. Um, I think this Padres team is just not deep enough. The rotation, I think, hasn't been quite as good as what I was hoping it would be. Uh, the lineup has been... Again, not bad, but just shallow. I mean, it feels like after the top four, this lineup falls off pretty hard. Jackson Merrill has kind of come back down to earth. Some of their other bottom of the order pieces are, are rotating around. I don't think this team is a playoff caliber team, but I do think they are better than the Mets, than the Giants. I think they'll finish probably third in the division, uh, but I, I don't see them making it into the playoffs here. So two playoff teams left in either league, and let's go ahead and start with the American League. I've got the Royals. I think the Royals are going to get in. I think this team has done more than just a hot start to the season. I think this rotation looks like the real deal, and the lineup, to me, was the thing I liked so much about this team going into the year. It felt like a lineup full of guys who can get on base and create runs on the bases, and I think this team is really, really solid. The bullpen looks much better than it was a year ago, and obviously the rotation is pretty locked down right now in Kansas City. Cole Reagans is an ace. Brady Singer looks really good. Seth Lugo looks untouchable. I think this Royals team is going to get over the hump here and make it back to the playoffs in 2024, and a team I have missing the playoffs is going to be the Astros. I think this team is very similar to the Cardinals of last year where they start off so bad that you just keep expecting, oh, the Astros will turn it around, they'll turn it around, they'll turn it around, and it feels like they just haven't. You know, every time they win a series, they lose the next one or put up a bad showing in the next one. I think this is the end of the road for the Astros dynasty. I feel like they need to kind of retool that franchise. You know, to me, the young guys who've come up haven't really been as good as we expected. Jeremy Pena has kind of been mediocre since his rookie season. Yainer Diaz started off hot, but he's really cooled off. Um, obviously, the pitching rotation has you know, dealt with some injuries for sure, but to me, I just don't think this team is quite good enough to make the playoffs. If they were in the NL, this team is a playoff team 100%, but I don't think they're gonna make it with how good the American League is right now. I have three teams left here for the National League, and two of them got to make the playoffs. And the first one I'm putting in is going to be the Arizona Diamondbacks. This D-back team has not been as good as I thought they were going to be. I thought these guys were going to come out and build off of their playoff run from last year and really be the clear-cut number two team in the division. And they've come out slow, and I think part of it was adding Jordan Montgomery late, and you know he kind of looked shaky his first couple outings. Corbin Carroll obviously is off to a terrible start. But I do have faith in this team to turn it around. I think that, again, the AL, I think they would have a much tougher time, but I don't think they're going to get as punished for a slow start in the National League. And I have more faith in the Diamondbacks than I do teams like the Padres, like the Mets, like the Giants. Uh, I think this Diamondback team is going to make it into the playoffs. And I think this team is going to be one of those teams who gets hot at the end of the season and kind of runs that into a good playoff run again. World Series run? I don't think so, but I, I could see them making it to the second round of the playoffs and putting up a good series against one of the top teams like the Dodgers or Phillies. Uh, but I do think the D-backs make it back to the playoffs this season. Speaking of World Series teams back into the playoffs, I got the Rangers making it in. Um, they're going to be my last American League playoff team, so the Twins and Blue Jays I think are just going to miss out. The Blue Jays, to me, just have not done enough. You know, it feels like every year we say, this is going to be the year the Blue Jays put it all together, and they just haven't. Um, the Twins, I think, have gotten off to a really nice bounce back after a terrible start. You know, that's kind of what we wanted to see from the Astros. But the Twins, I don't think are quite good enough to sustain this level of play. I think they're not going to be able to dig out of this hole. There's a good chance to me that more of these guys get hurt. You know, they have a very injury prone team. And uh, I don't think the Twins are going to be as good as the Rangers are going to be when they kind of get all their injury guys back. Uh, this Rangers team, they're a World Series champion for a reason. I think when you look at what this team has done, despite all the injury troubles, they've still kept their head above water. They've still kept themselves in the race. I don't think they're going to win the division, but I think it'd be really tough for them to miss the playoffs, even with teams like the Twins, Blue Jays, and Astros, who I think are all solid. Even teams like the Red Sox, I think are solid. I don't think they're going to be able to outperform the Rangers over the course of 162, though. 
The final playoff spot is going to go to the, either the Cubs or Cardinals for me. I do think two NL Central teams get into the playoffs. The division is weak. The league really is weak, especially after the top two or three teams. Uh, so I think the NL Central is going to send two teams to the playoffs. But this, to me, is the toughest battle. I think the Cardinals... A week ago, obviously, they would have been maybe even in the try but failed here. You know, a week ago, I might have even put the Cardinals here, but I think they've gone on a nice run. I think 12 of their last 15, uh, they seem to be getting some production from those young guys who we thought maybe were not going to work out in the big leagues. Goldschmidt starting to get hot, and I think this team could be pretty promising down the stretch, whereas the Cubs are kind of the opposite. The Cubs came out, looked great. Their rotation looked completely reformed with Shotoe Managa in it. Uh, the, the lineup looked like they were doing what they did toward the second half of last year where this team looked really scary. I think this is going to be a tough race for these two teams. It's going to be a battle back and forth. But for me, I'm going to go with the Cardinals. I think the Cardinals have a little bit more talent on the roster. I think we've already started to see the Cubs cracks kind of seep through and the big difference between these two teams for me is the bullpens i think the cardinals feel a lot of pressure after a bad 2023 to get back to the playoff in 2024 and they're going to do whatever it takes to get there they're going to add somebody at the at the trade deadline they're going to send away a prospect or two where the cubs project i think is a little bit more long term and they don't necessarily have that urgency the cardinals do so i got the cardinals just sneaking into the playoffs 84 wins i think will do it in the national league um, so I got the Cardinals just barely getting in. This is where I see the teams after two months. Let me know what, what do you hate about this list? What do you like about it? Where do you see I got the most wrong? But if you did enjoy this video, please leave a like and subscribe. And let me know what you think about these more unscripted, grander scheme type videos. Uh, not saying the recaps are going away by any means, but wanted to do something a little bit different this week and uh, see what you guys thought. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you all in the next one.